everyone. Today I'll be making the 10th and final update video for my password protected digital VHS format here. This is technically called the Pro HD format. Now this format is not very well known because when it was released way back in 2004, it was only sold to professionals. So you pretty much couldn't buy these at your brick and mortar stores. They had to be ordered and you had to sign a contract. Now this setup was quite expensive. Um, it was about uh, $37,000, so that was quite a lot of money. But even though it cost $37,000, it actually saved the motion picture industry as well as the television broadcast stations a whole lot of money because of the fact that the tapes themselves, that would be the digital VHS tapes. Back in 2004, these were not that expensive. These were only about $11 each. So $11 compared to a professional format videotape, that was a very big difference. So this was a very inexpensive way to ship out videos, protected videos, that would be like daily recordings, as well as screeners. The, the TV, as well as motion picture industry, critics, they would receive these tapes in the mail back in 2004 and they would view these in their homes, in the privacy of their own homes. Now they had to type in the password. Now, I don't know exactly how that password was communicated between the uh, motion picture industry and the critics themselves. It's, uh, it's very hard to find info on this. Now, the reason I'm making so many parts is because I really want to make this format justice because there really isn't that much information. And um, a lot of things that I'm going to show you right now, I'm not just going to tell you, I'm actually going to show you a lot of these things, I mean, at least to me, I thought they were impossible. Now, the manuals, as well as the brochures that I have shown in my other videos, they don't state these settings. Um, they don't show, they, they don't let you know that these settings are possible. And I am gonna let you know what that is. Uh, what those settings are is the fact that you don't have to use this encoder here, this very big, very expensive, very hard to find encoder. Now, I was able to find this encoder on eBay for a total of $100. That was a very good buy. Now, it does work. I have used this. I have made Pro HD recordings. That would be in the 25 megabits with the higher color spectrum. That would be the 422 with this machine. But I don't really want to show you this machine, how it works, because I don't really consider that to be uh, a, a special. There's other settings on this machine which are way more special because, I mean, at least I thought they were impossible. Now today, I will not be using this encoder. I am showing it to you right now, this encoder. Now I am going to place this encoder aside. I'm also going to disassemble that VCR, but the mastering recorder. Now that mastering recorder cost $6,000 back in 2004. It was quite expensive. Uh, this is the playback machine. Now this machine was not that expensive. It only cost about $1,500. And it's a very good machine. I use this machine whenever I view standard VHS videotapes. And it has a superb picture, a very nice picture. So let me go ahead and uh, focus on these machines, which is pretty much why I make these videos. I don't really make these videos about me. They're not really about me. They're about these very rare machines. Now, I own many rare machines, which I do plan to make videos for. Well, eventually, I really don't rush these things. I really take my time and I really try my best. And I gotta know I'm not really a professional. You're not gonna see any kind of fancy new background music, any kind of nice transitions. This is, this is not, um, this is pretty much, I don't really write down what, I, what I'm gonna talk to you about. This is just coming out of me, out of my heart, and I'm gonna try my best. So let me go ahead and focus on these machines right here. Now, as you can see right here, I have this piece of paper right here. And this paper right here says 6177, June 1st, 1977. Now, why do I have this right here? Well, actually, I really thought long and hard what to record today. I am going to make a recording in a couple minutes. And 
in the past I've made recordings of the Big Buck Bunny. That's the open project. There is a Creative Commons license for that video where you can show that video on YouTube videos. But for this project, this format, I really wanted to record something different. Now, I was contacted via YouTube, via the comments section, which is wonderful. I really welcome your comments and I promise to respond to your questions. I mean, I really love doing this. I mean, I gotta tell you the truth. One of the reasons I'm making this video is because I really love this kind of stuff. I recently found out that there's a name for this kind of hobby. It's called um, being a noodler. I mean, I, it sounds funny, but I love it. I love this whole noodling thing around with vintage technology, trying to mix vintage technology with newer technology. It's, I mean, it's wonderful. And you learn a lot of things that you yourself, they, you probably don't know if they're going to work or not, but when you discover that they work, it's so wonderful. And I love sharing those discoveries with the world via YouTube. I mean, YouTube, it's the best. It's not really going anywhere. It's only getting better. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this. Now, this is this will be the password for the recorded video that I will be making in a little bit, a little while. Now, this password was chosen by Chris. Now, Chris, he, what he does, uh, it's something wonderful. He makes computer animated films and he posts them on YouTube. Now, he doesn't do this for the money. He does this as a way to um, to kind of, I mean, he's... Chris has told me that he loves the 70s and I believe him. I mean, I consider Chris to be someone who really loves the 70s. And it's very interesting because he was actually not born in the 70s. He's a very young man. I believe he's uh, 18 years old right now. And uh, he told me one day via YouTube, I'm interested in collecting vintage machines. And he was really interested on one of my Sanyo V-Core 2 format machines. And I, I told him, you know what? I'm going to give you one machine because I have quite a few. I don't really need that many V-Core 2 machines. I gave him one. I paid to have it shipped to him. And I really thought long and hard before I gave him that machine. And I realized that the best home for that machine was in the hands of Chris because Chris... He doesn't just collect machines. He uses them. He shows them to his friends and his family. He records onto them, just like I do. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that machine belongs in a museum. But you know what? Being in a museum behind glass doing nothing, that's no life. There's nothing like being appreciated and used. So I really love the fact that Chris owns one of my Sanyo v 2 machines and the fact that he records onto it. He's told me that he has recorded wonderful music videos on those v 2 format tapes. So this will be the password that I will be designing today. So let me go ahead and uh, put aside this encoder down here. Like I told you, this encoder does work. I have used it when I make Pro HD format recordings, but I don't plan to do that in this video. I really plan to show you something that, like I told you, I thought it was impossible because I, ha I have never read this online. I've never heard anyone say such a thing, but I am going to show you right now that it is possible. So let me go ahead and place this encoder aside. I don't really plan to show you how this encoder works because I don't really consider this encoder to be uh, as impressive as what I am going to show you in a couple minutes. So let me go ahead and put this encoder aside. Quite heavy, quite big. This is actually designed for a server rack. It's a 1U setup and this is a professional HDTV encoder. All right. So I just put that aside, quite heavy. Now this is the playback machine. I will be using this machine today to play back that password recorded video that I will be recording right now. Now let me focus on this mastering recorder right here. That will be this right here. 
let me go ahead and separate the bottom machine this bottom machine is considered an ASI unit the way this works is this actually receives the signal from that HDTV encoder and the way that it receives that signal No, I just turned off my fridge. Like I told you, I'm not a professional. I'm actually in my kitchen right now. Okay, so that bottom ASI unit receives a video, both a video and audio signal from that HTV encoder, which I just got rid of because I don't really want to focus on that HTV encoder. So let me go ahead and separate those two machines. I did remove the screws before I made this video. To kind of make this video a little bit shorter, but like I'll tell you the truth, this is gonna be a very long video because I'm really gonna I'm gonna take my time. Alright, so let me go ahead and separate this top VCR machine from this bottom ASI unit right there. You don't have to absolutely use this bottom ASI unit. Now I have shown the insides of that machine in my previous video that would be the ninth video they have made for this format so that asi unit has been placed aside so by removing that bottom machine this machine is technically a professional machine by removing that bottom part it now looks like a standard consumer machine so i have my master recorder with its bottom ASI unit removed and I have this playback machine. Let me go ahead and open these covers right here, like so. All right. Now, something that I want to show you is kind of like the difference between the programming between these two machines. This master recorder has a very short, very ugly looking programming. This one is much nicer looking and it has a lot more settings. Let me go ahead and turn on my two monitors up there. I love those two monitors because they're, they're not that old. I mean, they are technically LED monitors, which I really love. They're very efficient. I mean, I don't really own many um, cathode ray tube televisions because they're very inexpensive and they're very big and they're very heavy. I really love those monitors because they have that 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which is kind of hard to find now in the here now. All right, so that one is on, and this one is on. Now this left side monitor will be fed via the master recorder, and this right side monitor will be fed via the playback machine right there. I'm kind of adjust my... My cell phone, I'm actually using my cell phone right now. I don't really own a professional uh, video camera. I'm, I'm just using my regular everyday cell phone, which I mean, to tell you the truth, a cell phone compared to these machines that I am gonna show you right now, they record a much higher signal than this right here. But I really appreciate these machines because they're part of history especially because they're part of VHS. I love VHS. And this is technically one of the very last machines that were designed by the VHS format. And VHS, it, it kind of, I can't, you can kind of say, it, it kind of came to save the day. Because when these machines were released, you already had the DVD format. But the DVD format, it really was not able to record in 1080i, which is a lot of resolution. I mean, obviously it's not 4K, but it's still relevant. And also the DVD spec never allowed password protected recordings. Now these machines do allow that. I will be designing, designating this password on this machine today. Now, like I told you, this password was chosen by Chris. Okay, so I'm going to try to turn on both of these machines. I'm going to try to synchronize this as much as possible. This machine, it you can go ahead and use it uh, in a few seconds. Now, this one takes it a longer, it, it does a whole lot of tests before you can do anything on it. Let me go ahead and turn both of them at the same time. And I'm, you're going to be able to see 
how much longer this machine takes up to boot up compared to this one. All right, I'm gonna try to kind of synchronize this as much as possible. There you go, they're on. Okay, now the reason that that screen was kind of weird is because I'm, I actually am designating, believe it or not, I will be recording today a digital format VHS tape via standard composite. I mean, not many machines allow such a thing. On many of these machines, you had to use either the Firewire input or I believe there was one machine that actually had component inputs. Um, not many machines allowed you to record via composite. Now the remotes for these machines look quite differently. Now this is the remote for the mastering recorder and this is the remote for the playback machine. This remote has one button that says NAVI. That would be navigation, video navigation. This playback machine does have video navigation. This mastering recording does not have video navigation because it really wasn't necessary. I mean, this was a professional machine. There really wasn't a need to store any kind of information on the machine itself. And it must have been a bad idea. I mean, this machine, if it had video navigation, it would have had at least 1000 passwords recorded on its internal memory and if for any reason this machine had been had fallen in the wrong hands a, a total of 1000 videos would have been viewable um, for piracy which is actually one of the many reasons that this format was invented it was invented to kind of deter piracy all right let me kind of prop this up just a bit so you can kind of open up the front cover right there that's better okay let me kind of show you the difference on the programming i'm going to press menu on this master recorder yeah that, that doesn't look that nice it's kind of like a gray background very uh basic kind of like a dos operating system um interface right there not very nice looking now on this playback machine the programming looks a lot better look at that we have a very nice kind of like a background uh backdrop right there and we have a lot more colors we have like an arrow a very nice looking arrow right there this is like a very basic yellow looking arrow now on this playback machine and kind of zoom in I really want to show these screens very well because like I told you there are no videos on this right here okay that's a lot better now on this menu notice it says password setup there are no options on this machine for to designate a password because it's actually not possible this playback machine cannot record create password protected videos only this master recording can let me go ahead and designate a password i'm gonna go ahead and press okay okay right here it says lock number that's where you would press i mean it might have been the motion picture industry it might have been the tv stations they would de designate a password right there it can be anywhere between zero and 65,534. Now that's quite a lot of choices between zero and 65,534. Now technically this does not allow letters, only numbers. Um, I, I mean, imagine if it allowed num letters, the combinations would have been staggering. But still, I mean, if this machine would have fallen on the wrong hands, along with a protective video, that would have taken a long time to figure out the password. Like I told you, it can be anywhere between zero, like so. I mean, you can designate zero if you wish. I know it would have been a very bad idea to designate zero as a password, but it is possible. 
it, it, it could be zero. In this case, I will designate it as, let's go ahead and choose the password that Chris chose. Now he chose 6,177. Let's go ahead and press OK. So now that password has been designated. Notice right there, it says lock number 6177. Now, right now you're probably thinking, why 6177? Why June 1st, 1977? Well, something very wonderful happened on this date. It was the date of the Bigfoot. Now, now I know what you're thinking, Bigfoot. I know that Bigfoot has a huge fan base. I mean, it's huge. I mean, I know people, they designate entire weeks to camp out and find Bigfoot. I mean, I don't know if, if somebody will ever find him or not. I can't tell you that. But sometimes you have to consider that even, even if they never find Bigfoot, if, even if he's, he's never found, the time spent the wonderful time spent with friends finding Bigfoot is something very special. And also, Bigfoot is one of many things in life that keep our mind young. Because I know when you grow older, you tend to close your mind to the, to the unknown, to, the, the, to whatever's out there. And when you keep your mind young, you, you kind of have these dreams, these kind of thoughts what if what if he's real what if he's out there what if what if he has a uh, a lady friend with him i mean it's wonderful so um obviously chris he's a bigfoot fan that's why he designated this password all right so that password has been set let me go ahead and get out of this menu setting and let me go ahead and get out of this menu setting on the playback machine. Okay. So right now this master recorder is set up for the F1 channel, which is technically the front audio slash video inputs. That would be these right here. This has a small little cover that opens up right there. Right here we have S video, we have composite video, we also have RCA analog inputs. Uh, today, I will be recording via composite. I mean, I could go ahead and record via S video if I wish, but I really love RCA composite because I know it's old. I know it's outdated, but I mean, at least to me, it really reminds me of when I was a kid, when I was a child, when I used to use old VCRs. I used to record via this guy and it's very special for me. I know a lot of better connections have been released like um, HDMI component, um, mini display port. I know that, but for at least to me personally, this RCA composite video is very special for me. So let me go ahead and connect my I love the monster cable cables. These right here, these were uh, quite expensive when they were released back in the late '90s. Um, but you can still find these on eBay and Amazon. They they work quite well. Uh, they have gold plating. They're um, shielded. Uh, they're oxygen free copper wire inside. I mean, they're wonderful. So I will be using my monster cables today. And this will be the inputs. That will be the input RCA composite right there. Notice that the monitor kind of changed. And um, let me go ahead and connect the RCA audio inputs. That would be analog inputs. Now, not many. Uh, that, that, that's Chris's video right there playing. Okay, so let me go ahead and I show you what my source will be today. Now today, my source will be my computer. Now this computer I recently purchased from eBay. It is a refurbished Alienware M17. 
R3. Beautiful machine. Now, this was not too expensive. This was a total of $1,100, which is it's a very low price for such a machine. I mean, that is a huge 17-inch screen. Now, I did upgrade it a bit. Now, originally, when I purchased this, this computer, uh, like I told you before, I kind of deviate with what I'm talking about, but I'll get back to it, trust me. When I bought this laptop, it only came with 256 gigabyte SSD, which is not much. I mean, after I installed my software, I realized that I had uh, about 20% free space. So obviously I needed more space. And I love the fact that this Alienware M17 R3 has a total of three. Yes, believe it or not, three SSD ports. So you can, I mean, if you wish, you can go ahead and install three SSDs in here. Now, right now I have a total of two. I have that original SSD, which came with this computer, which is, it wasn't really the highest performance. It was from the SK Hynix company, which I mean, it's not the fastest. It is quite impressive. What I did was I used that original S SK Hynix SSD as my secondary drive. And I designated my new first drive as this Samsung, that would be the 970 EVO Plus. Now this performs a lot faster than the original uh, SSD in here. And it, it, this wasn't that expensive. This is a two terabyte SSD. So right now, technically I have a total of two and a quarter terabytes on this computer. I mean, I can go ahead and install a third SSD if I wish for a grand total of four and a quarter terabytes. I mean, that's, that's incredible to know that you can have such a huge amount of storage space on a computer. Anyways, so let me get back to this. Now I will be playing uh, Chris's video. I'm actually going to play two. Now he told me, go ahead and play as many as you wish. I mean, he told me, I love the fact that you decided to use my videos. And actually, I also love the fact that I'm using his videos. I, like I told you, he does this for fun. He doesn't do this for the money. And I've noticed that he, he puts a very nice comedic point of view to the 70s. And he respects the 70s. He loves the 70s. Now, these two videos will be regarding both Bigfoot as well as Krampus. I, I mean, Krampus... Krampus goes way back. I mean, way further back than Bigfoot. I mean, Krampus has a way bigger fan base than Bigfoot. But, I mean, they're both elusive. I mean, nobody has actually um, talked to both of these uh, beings. Um, at least not yet. Maybe in the future. So, let me go ahead and uh, rewind this. Now, my favorite PC-based playback, video playback program is G-O-M player. That's the letter G, the letter O, and the letter M. Now it is a free program. You can download this for free. A lot, I know a lot of people, they love the VLC. Well, I mean, which is wonderful. I use it as well, but I mostly use this G-O-M player. So let me go ahead and press play. Let, let me kind of show you how, how you might be thinking, how is it possible that you're connecting a modern day computer to via RCA composite? Oh, let me go ahead and show you that. Let me show you how that was possible. Okay, now this is uh, being output via the modern day that would be the HDMI. Now this computer does have HDMI outputs. This computer it has quite a few outputs. It has HDMI, it has a mini display port. It has um, Thunderbolt 3 connection as well as graphics expansion connection, which I really love. I do plan to install an external graphics card to this computer. And I love knowing that by using an external graphics card, I'm still going to be able to use that Thunderbolt 3 connection. 
All right, so this HDMI output is being fed into my adapter. Now, I really recommend this adapter because this adapter has quite a few settings. It has two underscan settings as well as an overscan settings. Now, this can be used via either NTSC or PAL, which is wonderful. And it also has a wonderful aspect ratio setting. It can change your aspect ratios, which you really need. I mean, the video that I'm going to play you is going to be played back by a widescreen. It's going to fill up my entire white widescreen screen on my computer, but it is going to be recorded on this digital VHS tape on the standard 4 to 3 aspect ratio. Now this adapter allows such a thing. I know you'll find a whole lot of adapters on Amazon and eBay, but I have not been able to find one with as many settings as this guy. And it doesn't cost you much as well. This is from the Hall Research Company. This is the VHD slash HD2CB. All right, so that's, that's being fed into my adapter. Now the output is obviously composite RCA as well as analog RCA audio out. And that is being fed into my VCR. And that VCR is being fed into this monitor back here by a component. All right. So that, uh, without further ado, I mean, thanks to Chris. Thank you very much, Chris, if you're watching this video. Let's go ahead and play his wonderful animation. All right, so that is playing. Let me go ahead and turn up the volume on my monitor. All right, so that, that is Chris's video playing back right there. And uh, let me go ahead and record it. I am going to go ahead and record his wonderful video. Let me go ahead and uh, press stop. Let me go ahead and uh, rewind again. Now, believe it or not. Now, what I'm about to tell you is something that, I mean, at least I thought was impossible. Until I own these machines. A after I bought these machines, I've been messing around with them quite a bit. Now that, like I told you, that Pro HD setting is, is quite impressive. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful picture. It's, I mean, that's 25 megabits. That's a whole lot of data. Now the manuals don't say this, but you are able to make a password protected video by using either the standard or the LS3 modes. Now the manuals, they don't say that. And I am going to record today via the standard setting. Now I have tried, I have tried to record via the high standard and it doesn't work. Uh, it would have been wonderful if it did work, but, um, now there's a card in here. It looks quite, um, quite rough. And I've, I've shown that card in, an, in my previous video. That would be the ninth part to this setup. I, I, I think that card might have allowed these settings because like I told you, this is not stated on the manuals or the brochures. The fact that you can designate a password protected video via the standard setting or the LS3. Now, when it records in the standard, it records in 14.4 megabits. And when it records in the LS3 mode, it records in 4.7. I mean, considering the fact that I'm recording via composite, either one of those would work fine. Uh, like I told you, today we'll be recording via the standard. So let me go ahead and press a tape in here. So this is uh, my Mitsubishi branded digital VHS tape here. Now I have bought quite a few of these and I do plan to buy more. I mean, I love recording in analog magnetic videotape, which includes this format as well. So let me go ahead and place this tape in here. This would be the master recorder. So that's in there. Like I told you, this machine does not have video navigation, which, which, which actually makes it a lot faster. For example, on this playback machine, whenever I put a tape in here, it kind of takes a while. It has to read the tape itself and find out if there's a uh, video navigation des designated on it or not. 
uh, like like you saw right here I just paste that tape in here and we do not have any kind of uh, playback because it does not have that setting that would be the video navigation also let me kind of zoom in here which is something kind of weird normally on digital VHS machines this would be where you would have your that would be the firewire port but there is no firewire port in here because it's actually inside the machine I've actually shown you that port on my previous video that would be the ninth part to this setup this is the tenth part the tenth and final part I really took my time and I, I made this in different parts because to tell you the truth if I had made this setup this video in one video it would have been like at least five hours long I mean I really get into this kind of stuff all right so my video tape is in there and uh, notice that the front screen it is showing the DVHS actually this machine is quite smart it'll let you know if it's a digital VHS tape if it's a super VHS tape or if it's a standard now on these two machines you really can't trick them by tricking I mean there were other machines that you can actually trick them into thinking they had a digital VHS machine uh, tape uh, the way that you could do that on other machines unfortunately you can't do that with this machine you would drill holes on these tapes see notice on this tape right here this is a digital VHS tape it has a hole right there and it has a hole right here now on super VHS machines you only had one of these two and obviously on standard VHS machines you had neither one of these two I know and now I've read this via and I never actually done it because uh, I mean these tapes are still available you can still find these on eBay so um, I prefer buying an, a, an actual digital VHS tape than buying a super VHS tape and drilling a hole and kind of now there was a risk for example when you made that hole if for any reason you had some um, residue plastic in there there was a chance that it would kind of mess up your ribbon in here so this is in fact a digital VHS tape and the machine itself actually knows that it has one because it actually uses its internal video drum to to find out if it has a digital VHS tape or not so let me go ahead and press, place that in here again now I am going to go ahead and designate a recording speed now I won't be using the Pro HD speed because I'm missing quite a few things I'm missing the bottom ASI unit and I'm also missing the HDTV encoder so this is the button that you press to designate different recording speeds you can either record um, in the high standard mode which I won't do because I told you it's not possible I mean unfortunately you can't record a protected video via high standard the machine tells you there's an error um, you have the standard which is what I'm going to use today you can designate a password protected video via standard you can also use the LS3 mode which records in 4.7 megabits now I, will, I won't be recording in the LS3 mode today I will be recording in the standard mode which is something that I mean at least I thought was impossible to record via the standard mode a password protected video all right so let me go ahead and play my video on my computer and I'm going to go ahead and record it with my VCR right here uh, turn the volume up all right let me go ahead and press play and go ahead and press record so we are in fact recording let me go ahead and put it in full screen there you go wonderful cars from the 70s that's a beautiful station wagon
I killed it. Notice recording in standard speed. Oh my god, it's a Bigfoot. Huge feet. <laughs> oh no, it's the Popo. Now I don't know what that whale is doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Chris though. That must that might be an, an inside joke. Uh, oh nothing. I uh I I I I I was just doing photosynthesis. Photosynthesis? Like what ferns do? Huh? Oh yes, ferns. I'm part fern. My mother was a pteridium. And my father was a polypodium blitzeritzia. Glyce. Glycer. Glycerhiza. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. That's right. Give me a moment here. Polypodium glycerhiza. A polypo. Wow, that's a long time. My father was a polypodium glycerizza. <laughs> yep, I'm a plant. Oh my god. What is that hairy thing in your car? Nancy Reagan. Oh, wow. Nancy Reagan. Uh, yep. Oh, thank God that was just a breeze. Yosemite sucks. Very short video. Made by Chris. Notice the 1977 date. Now I will be placing a shortcut on the description to this video so you can see more of Chris's wonderful animations. Now this is the second video. This is regarding Krampus. A beautiful German landscape right there. Very nice. A German style home. Mary, come on over here. I want to tell you a story about Krampus. That's a big book. Don't worry, the font size is as large as Dolly Parton's hair helmet. Wow. Now it was a mid December night, and there were. I want cake, give me cake, and mint chocolate chip ice cream, and make it snappy. Where's my damn cake? I'm waiting, you morons. I want the ice cream now. He won't shut up, Dagmar. Oh, really? I want damn cookies. That's it. Go to your room. No, no. I'll be good. I promise. <clears throat> well, that day, do you want presents? Um, oh, okay. <coughs> Little brat didn't give me anything. <laughs> Notice there is a lag between these two screens. Well, I guess it's time to call Krampus. Station wagons. I love these station wagons. He's not a very good driver. Wait, Krampus doesn't drive the BMW 1820 station wagon. And how the hell would you know? Anyway, Krampus went and snatched up naughty little Boris and took him off. Now, this is an obvious Krampus, family guy Krampus, Krampus. inside joke. Silence, you little brat. Ew, how about a tic tac? Ooh, a butterfly. Forget the stupid butterfly, you unregistered pig. Okay, okay. Do you want to play a game? Yeah, a game! Good. The game is, can you last 15 minutes with your pizza hole shut? That sounds stupid. 
That's the beauty of it. You're stupid too. Still works. Hey, you skipped a part. Hey, I got a casserole in the oven. I'm trying to hurry here. Okay, so at Krampus' house. Okay, let me check my answering machine. And I'll have you simmering in a pot of broth in no time. Hey, the cramp. It's Brandy here. I need someone tonight. Just come over as soon as possible, baby. Good night. Get out. What? What? spread it to you thin, Boris. I give more of a damn for those gnats that always hover around my apples and peaches during the hot nights of August. Oh, wow. And the end. Bye. This is wonderful. I mean, you don't have to have a huge Christmas. I mean, if it's a tiny little Christmas, that's all you need. Very 70s. go ahead and stop this so we did record we did go ahead and record a total of eight minutes and 53 seconds let me go ahead and rewind this videotape right here now that is rewinding let me go ahead and uh, remove my computer that's no longer I need for this computer I already made that recording. Right. That was quite fast. Actually, I've noticed that the, the later machines that would be either the super VHS or the digital VHS machines, they rewind and they fast forward quite fast. I mean, compared to the original VHS machines, which uh, they used to take a long time to rewind. All right, so let's go ahead and play back that recording that we just made from my computer on this digital VHS tape with this mastering recorder. Now, like I told you, the manual does not say you can do such a thing, but it is possible. And it actually acts a little bit different than the playback machine. So let me go ahead and try to play that and see what happens. All right, 
kind of zoom in just a little bit to appreciate the full screen that will be the 4 to 3 aspect ratio which i really love i really love the 4 to 3 aspect ratio for example whenever i purchase um laser discs or vhs tapes i always try to buy the uh the 4 to 3 aspect ratio ones i know that uh you lose a lot a lot of um uh, information but i just love that aspect that's what i used to use when i was a kid so let me go ahead and press play